Good day. I'm the Reverend Ronald Nathan, and I'm the minister of the Hogad AME Zion Church in Jackson, St. Michael, in the island of Barbados. I'm pleased to be with you today and to welcome you to this broadcast. We have been having a series of meditations from the book of Habakkuk, and I pray that you'll follow along with us as we continue uh, with this wonderful prophet who wrote just 56 verses reflecting on the situation between Judah and Babylon. Babylon in the 7th century and then in uh, uh, continuing would enter into Judah, capture Judah, including the city of Jerusalem, destroy the city, uh, kill many people and take away all its resources, including many of the young men and women, the, those with potential, and take them into Babylon. Hence, we have that song that has become so familiar down the ages by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, where we wept when we remember Zion, which was Jerusalem. So we are looking at that um, book of Habakkuk and really interrogating some of the things that Habakkuk says of uh, what was going on. I want to read the concluding verse of Habakkuk's prophecy, and it reads like this. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. I am deeply impressed by the fact that Habakkuk was able to reach a point in his faith where he accepted that God had intervened in the affairs of men and had uh, executed a judgment on his people and on the nations surrounding him and yet come out with such confidence and hope in God. I suspect that like everybody else, Habakkuk was asking the question, what will happen to us now? Now that this invading army has come, now that we find ourselves in these difficult situations, given these unfortunate circumstances that have befallen us, in his case, it was the invasion of the Babylonian uh, on, on the country. What will happen to us? And what will we have to do? I want to make a, a contemporary application of that question. Given COVID-19 pandemic, given the situation that we find ourselves in, for those who are from the Caribbean in particular, the vulnerability that we would experience with the downturn in our economies, tourism dollar being almost completely cut off, uh, the conflict of trying to find a balance between development and uh, the environmental sustainability, the fact that so many of us uh, do not have the wherewithal to be able to sustain a good quality of life. What will happen to us? And what will we have to do? Well, I believe that the first thing that uh, Habakkuk realized, and we see that Habakkuk withdrew himself, he went up onto the walls, onto the ramparts, so that he could view what was taking place, but he moved himself really out of harm's da uh, danger, or out of harm's way. We need to stay alive. During this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we need to do all that is within our uh, ability to do to stay alive. But beyond that, we have to also begin to plan on how we will move on. Habakkuk says that he's going to be in these high places. God is going to give him stability. Even um, in 
a very precarious situation. In other words, he was planning to move on. Now, we know from history that what took place was there would be some people who would be left in the country of Judah, okay? And they were mainly the poor, the elderly, and those who were disabled in some way. There'd be others who were strong and conniving enough to be able to flee to Egypt, to Europe, to Asia, to Arabia, and other places. And yet there would be those who would be taken, who would be taken to Babylon to live. Of course, there were many that died. And all of these options are going to be before us. Some of our people will go to the other islands. Some will go uh, to, if they have exported, uh, exportable skills, will go uh, to America, to Europe, to Canada. And there will be those who will stay and try to make the best of life here. But whichever position we're in, I believe that there are four things we need to do. Wherever we are located, whether we are in the north, up in Europe or America, Canada, or even go south to Brazil. There are four things we need to do, and they are in four hours. We need to repent. We need to revive. We need to reinvest. And we need to rebuild. Repent. Reflecting on God's words and our unwillingness to follow his leading, we need to search our hearts and say, Oh God, forgive me. If I didn't use your gifts properly, if I didn't uh, take your words seriously, if I was not generous uh, with that which you've blessed me, we need to repent. Forgive me. Then we need to revive our faith, restore our faith, build up our faith, uh, begin to inculcate the word of God in our lives, in our work ethic, in our governance. And the third area, we need to reinvest our gifts. We need to reinvest our gifts. In other words, we need to build up our resources so those who can plant plant those who can build build those who can um, uh, gather uh, ideas together uh, they are creative sing write we need to do those things because that's part of our recovery and then finally we need to rebuild the things that remain uh, whether we are outside or inside, we need to help each other so that we can rebuild. Now, all of these things happened uh, in Habakkuk's Jerusalem. Less than a hundred years after Habakkuk prophesied, Jerusalem would be rebuilt. The walls will be rebuilt. The gates would be put back in place. There is hope after COVID-19. You and I must epitomize that hope. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask, O oh God, that you would help us as we seek your face, as we seek to do your will. We pray, O oh God, that you will give us the hope, the faith, and the love to be able to do all that you've placed within our hearts as you've brought us through this time. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us. If this transmission has been a blessing to you, we ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that you'll pass the link on to a friend and you'll give us a thumbs up. God bless and have a great day.